Here's the FMI latest video, shooting it here on November 9th, 2016. This is an Eastman VB80, all laminated, ebony fingerboard. This is a Milano uh, MB40, I believe, yes, all laminated. This here is another Milano MB40. All laminated, ebony fingerboards. This is a Milano MB100S, I believe the stock number is carved top, laminated sides and back. And there's another one of the same. This one's got sprocket cores, this has uh, Pelotino steels. This is a Shin carved top, and uh, Shin SB150. Core strings. This is a 1920s check made base, carved top, laminated sides and back. And it's a flat back as well. This is an arch back. Oh, $7,000 base from uh, Colin Volter, made in Romania. Here's a go-filler. This is the big body style like this, made by Christopher. Belcanto strings by Tomastic Enfield. Not much of a voice plucked. Great strings bowed. Here's a, a Milano MB40 removable neck. We've got to fix the neck to fit in there. Ebony fingerboard. Raw wood. This is a very heavily damaged Colin Volter hybrid. And it's called the hybrid. Uh, it's got a carved top, big shoulders, nice sounding bass. This is a still raw wood Milano MB40 with a removable neck conversion done. Ready for whatever, staining, finishing, paint job. And here are some American made bases on this rack. We've got a 41K, cell number 8817. We have a couple of new Ingoharts in a row here. This is got a Fishman full circle pickup in it. This is 1961 American made King Morton. Spire Force Dreams. This is another 1941K, serial number 9468. This is a Milano MB40, all laminate. That's a bright sounding string. Pelts and steel strings. This is an Ingleheart, believe it or not, all painted white. It's got the thin Ingleheart neck. It's got a carved scroll, unlike Ingleheart. But uh, we bought it with uh, an Ingleheart tailpiece, Ingleheart end pin. Ingleheart label in it. Somebody had already painted it white a while back. Yeah, if you can see the Ingleheart label in there. Can you see the, can you see it there? Can you see that it is an Ingleheart? This ought to light it up where you should be able to find it and see it. There's the label in there. Anyhow, it's a big sounding Ingleheart base. And this is another Milano MB40 F flame maple veneers. All laminated construction. This is a Milano MB40 that we got in the white and did an, a blonde stain oil finish and had it pinstriped out. That is a nice looking base, eh? This is the Palatino Billy Bass. That's a snare drum down there picking up some noise. Yes. Mm -hmm. Alright, here's another Milano Indy 40F.
So this is a Palatino EUB, electric car by base. We replaced the stock pickup that was in a little rectangle here. We cut this flat, put a realist copper head on there, mounted it firmly here. That sounds fantastic now, plugged in. It's got the same pickup as this Eminence. This is a fixed neck Eminence. Uh, 2800 is the retail price on these. They sound fantastic with the same pickup as that Palatino now. And this has got a better acoustic chamber. This is a real nice acoustic electric upright. All right, and here we have a blast cult base that we bought used off somebody. We're asking 2700 for it. You knew they're like five grandish. So if they're pickup, everything is theirs. It's just the blast cult reality there. The kind of strings they use. Flexible metal wound slap strings. And this here is a basic uh, base with a killer paint job and a removal of neck conversion done. Got a bolt on the top of the neck heel to hold it down. And uh, this one has a magnetic pickup installed on the end of the fingerboard with a, a board custom shape to fit the back of the fingerboard, glued in place, and then a, a clamp to uh, lock that pickup down because it doesn't want to stay put easily without that extra wood and the clamp. And now you could even be slapping a base with that pickup. It's, it's not going to be flopping around. And these are uh, Eurosonic ultralights. Steel core, nylon wound. Work with magnetic pickups. This is a super pinstripe flat back Milano base. Lead rackers. Logo. Ready to go back to uh, Viva Las Vegas this year, next year. All right, here's a couple hundred year old three string bass owned by Jazz Pioneer and the father of slap bass, Bill Johnson. Still has three strings. We plan to convert it to a four string and get it rentable because it sounds utterly fantastic amplified. This is a bass with real gut strings. He is metal wound. It's got a, a deuce bass bridge on it, a Vix pickup, a dual pickup for rockabilly. It's ready to rockabilly. This is a 5 8 German laminate bass. This is a size basic Milano. Needs the thing aboard work, but there it is. This is a quarter size. And then here's a Milano that we did the RV1 paint job on. And it's got a set of synthetic guts on it. It's got a uh, fixed bridge for maximum sound. It's a kind of wood that does allow more volume through without adjusters acoustically. And we got a banjo bass back here, a very unique instrument. This is another Milano bass with uh, some sort of rosewood fingerboard. And a second sound post, which really kills the acoustic sound. It's ready for the stage. Just put a pickup in the wing. We have a set screw for installing a pickup for optimum sound. And a set of rotor sound strings are on it. To an E80G. Here's a basic Milano. MV45 black bass for rockabilly. Set of weed wreckers. Just needs a pickup and it's ready for the stage. We got a killer paint job pink bass, the pink lady. That is tricked out, high level, cutting edge paint uh, techniques in that one. And then this one here is a Nicely pinstriped flat black with bright green. Matches the strings. This one's got a second sound post ready for the stage to avoid feedback. And uh, this one went to Viva Las Vegas this last year. All right, here's a Shin Blonde SB90. With a set of Palatino steel strings. Bright but big sounding strings. And bargain price on a $60 set of strings. 
workable strings. Here's a Shin SB80 with the same set of strings. And then here looks to be a K bass that's in here for yeah, major repairs. Bridge and uh, bass bars coming loose. And here is an, another Billy Bass cutaway. Pretty big sounding bass, huh? That's with the set of Palatina steel strings on it. Alright, we have some basses strung down the hallway in various stages of needing set up for repairs. And that is a chill on our bass. <laughs> this is a K bass we just got in to sell. And 1940K with the realist copperhead. It's in. Got a low jazz action. I mean, it's actually pretty good shape. Got some problems here and there, but uh, otherwise, good. We'll turn a little light on the hallway. Alright, here's another room on that base, ready to be finished up. This is a carved top, so this is going to be a hybrid traveling base, room on that travel base. Oh yeah, the, <laughs> this is a beater base, that, I mean really somebody broke it in here and we just tied it on the roof of a car to uh, to get attention, you know. Base with a, a base tied roof of a car driving around, that's like, wow, look at that. Anyhow, this is an Engelhart Swingmaster in the raw. Real ebony fingerboard, spruce veneer top, Swingmaster. We're going to stain it to somebody's specs and boom, boom, have a gorgeous base. Swingmaster, Engelhart. This is an Engelhart EM1 with the Brazilian Jatoba Cherry, what do they call it? This one has flame veneer um, maple top, sides and back. Anyhow, this one, I'm looking at doing a brown stain for the RB1 trim, that holes and edges, and then leave the rest of it blonde and make it a real blonde Ingleheart with the brown RB1 trim. I like that idea. And here's an old K that needs major restoration stuff. All right, that's about it. There you have it.